Thank you to KEH Camera for sponsoring this video. Well, unfortunately, with COVID making its way through our entire family this month and having to spend the entire second half of the month at home, I haven't been able to work on the video that I had in mind for this video and this series because I was wanting to do something in a public place and we obviously haven't been able to do that. So I haven't gone anywhere and I thought maybe I would develop some of the film and just share some of the photos for this episode, but I'm really trying to give myself some time before I see any of the photos that I've shot anytime recently. I'm trying to basically give myself time to remove as much bias as I can hopefully leading to a more objective editing process. I might discuss that a bit more in depth in a future video if that's something you would be interested in. I have been writing and thinking about that a lot lately, still kind of working that out, but um, it's definitely been on my mind a lot. All this to say, we're basically gonna be taking an intermission today in the series that I've been doing with KEH Camera where I basically show you the process as I'm working on a follow-up series to a friend of mine. Over the last few months, I've been settling into this new kind of chapter with my photography where I'm not shooting weddings or portraits or corporate stuff. My whole focus for the first time is now just this YouTube channel and making my own personal work. Stuff that I can release in prints and books and zines, that sort of thing. So as a result of that, my needs in my camera gear has changed a lot and I've completely switched up all of my gear and I've cleaned house basically. Actually, I do still have a couple others. Technically, they're not just in rotation or in use. I have my Minolta XGM, which was my first camera. That's now Elliot's camera. I have a Polaroid 600 one-step close-up. That was my first Polaroid camera that I bought in high school. And I also have a Polaroid 600 S that I bought specifically to shoot the last of my FP3000B that I'm saving for a special occasion. It will be in a video, don't worry. But everything in this case, this is what I use day in and day out, whether I'm at home or on the side of the road, everything here goes with me. I'm gonna go through everything and kind of give you a quick mini review, essentially telling you why I use it and when I might grab it over one of the other cameras in the case. The Leica M6 my everyday camera for eight and a half years now. This thing has seen everything. It's reliable, it's fast. It's just a camera I know inside and out and I don't have to think about it. That is my favorite thing about this camera is that I never really have to think about it when I'm using it. And you can do that with a lot of different cameras. It doesn't have to be this camera, but this is the camera that I just know and love. I use for everyday documentation. This is the one for me. It's always loaded with Ilford HP5 and I have two lenses for it, the 35 Summicron is spherical and 50 Summa Lux is spherical. Essentially like the perfect lenses for each focal length in my opinion. The 35 Summicron is spherical, compact, super sharp. Uh, it's just everything I would want in a 35. And then the 50 Summa Lux is pretty much everything I would want in a 50 as well. I finally bought it and I'm wishing I did a lot sooner because it's just great last 50 I'll ever buy for my M6. And anytime I need to use flash, I have the SF20 from Leica for my M6 TTL. With this flash and the M6 TTL, I have full TTL metering, so I like to just treat this like a point and shoot. I'll set my aperture anywhere between like 5.6 and F11, set my flash to TTL, zone focus, and there you go. I should also mention I get a lot of questions about the straps on my cameras and my videos. Uh, these are from my dear friends over at Sleepwalk. These are my signature straps. As a matter of fact, this is the new wrist strap variant that we just came out with. I don't really talk about it a whole lot here on the channel because I don't want people to feel like I'm just trying to sell to them all the time, but I do have a signature strap. It's been out for quite a while now. Um, we have several different lengths and different finishes to choose from. No gimmicks, it's just a well-made, reliable and durable camera strap made to last. I'll put a link down below for the straps if you're interested. Um, they do tend to sell pretty quick every time they do get restocked, but follow along at Sleepwalk LTD. That way, as new things drop, you guys can always stay up to date on that. Big shout out to my friends at Sleepwalk. I love you guys. The Mint SLR 670S. This is essentially a modified Polaroid SX70 done by the people at Mint Camera. With this camera and this little time machine module, you get way more control over your Polaroids. I've done videos on this in the past. I'll link those if you're interested, but this to me is a game changer. Uh, the SX70 is one of my all time favorite cameras. With this in really controlled environments where I want to meter and be really specific with that, I have the flexibility. But if I want the camera to do everything for me, what I like to do is just set this to A600. 
that's basically automatic mode for 600 speed because you can shoot 600 or SX70 film in this camera. That to me is one of the best things about it because 600 film, it's a faster film speed, so in low light situations or just indoors with natural daylight coming in through the windows, that typically gives me a much more usable handheld shutter speed. The way I keep the bag organized, I usually have three to four packs of film in there at any given time, and that's usually plenty of Polaroid film. I don't burn through Polaroid film nearly as much as I do through roll film just due to the cost. The Pentax 672. My one and only medium format camera, it's a camera I have used many times over the years. I've made videos about it way long ago. I've used it for personal work, I've used it for weddings, for portraits, taking it on vacation with me. For as big and heavy and clunky as these cameras are, I have used it for so much in my life over the years. Lately I've been using it for the Chillicothe project that KEH has been sponsoring that we've been talking about in this series that we're kind of taking a break from today. I've been using it for another project that I shared recently in the photographic therapy video. I've owned and loved a lot of different medium format cameras over the years, but love the viewfinder of the 672, love the ergonomics of it. Also the metering, the fact that I haven't carried a handheld meter in months just because the internal meter in this thing is so good. That to me is like, that's the that's a selling point in itself. You have plenty of different metering options. They're all very reliable and accurate. I love that I can just take this thing with a bag full of film and that's it. Now speaking of these Pentax lenses, I have two. I have the 105 f2.4 and the 75 f4.5. The 105, it's an iconic lens. When you're talking about that large format look, I would say that the, the 105 and the Pentax 67 in certain distances and certain conditions it can give you like 95% of that 4x5 look. All that to say I've been shooting it at f11 pretty much all the time lately. Delta 3200 in broad daylight, you know. You can stop your lens down though. A lot of people don't know that if they see where it's like, you know, f2.4 you can stop your lens down. Put that on TikTok and call it a photography hack. The 75 f4.5, I recently talked about this in a video where I took this to the Hopewell Mound group and made some pictures with it. And the more I use it and the more I love having that 75 millimeter field of view on the 6x7, the more I realize I'm probably going to end up buying the 75 f2.8 AL. It's a very, very expensive lens, but it is an incredible lens. The close focus distance and just the sharpness alone, it's really tempting me. So uh, don't be surprised if that pops up in a video at some point. As for the medium format film, usually Ilford Delta 3200, Ilford FP4, and Ilford HP5. Usually a mix of all of those in there. The Peak Design Tripod. This thing, I can't stand how much I love this tripod. I've talked about it a bunch, I think. Uh, it's just great. Super small. Uh, I love the design. Stupid expensive, but I would buy it again 100% just because it is so small and the design is so great. I use it when I'm shooting photos with the Pentax. I use it when I'm filming videos to actually put my video camera on it. Out of all the gear that I use, this is one that I use more than any and it never lets me down. The long weekend film bag, my boy Willem, one of my very dear friends, uh, him and Allison, this company, Long Weekend. They've got some amazing straps and bags and everything. These little film bags, though, are one of my favorite items ever. I have two different sizes. The smaller one I use to keep in the Pelican case with my unexposed film. They have a little divider in the middle, so in one side I keep my 120, and one side I keep my 35. And then at home in the big bag, I have all of my exposed film, so I have all of my 35 exposed on one side and all of my 120 exposed on the other. I love the material, I love the color, just the functionality and just the feel. Just what a great object. And then in this little pouch I keep extra batteries for my Pentax 672 because this is an electronic camera so clock's ticking. Pen and paper because it's always good to have pen and paper and then finally some gaff tape. This is crucial. Could have used it to seal up a roll of 120 recently. The little paper seal had ripped when I was taking it out of the camera and I ended up taking a mask out of my car and using the little elastic straps. That sort of thing is why I always have gaff tape on hand. So just in case I ever find myself in a similar predicament and I don't have my gaff tape, I went ahead and stored a few extra straps on the bottom of my camera. That way if I ever need one, I always have some in a pinch. Another life hack, write it down. And that's it. That's everything that I have in my case. It's really everything that I'm using now on a daily basis. For personal photos of my family, for working on series that I share here on this YouTube channel and in prints and book form, 
these are the tools that I use to do all of that. So if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer as much as I can about these. Just know that my gear changes all the time as my needs change, as my interests change. Um, you know, some of these cameras I've used a lot over the years. I've used some version of an SX70 for a long time. This camera I've carried with me almost a decade and this one I've been using in a lot of different scenarios at different times for the last I guess seven years and these cameras are all great and I love them but I've used a lot of different cameras over the years and I could make any of those photos with pretty much any of the cameras that I've owned. I'm happy to answer anything I can that would be helpful in the comments but just keep that in mind. It's always about what you put into it not what the gear does. That being said, if you do need a place to buy gear, I know the perfect place to do it, and that is KEH Camera. I say it every month, but I truly love working with KEH as a sponsor for this channel. This series, this project, following up friend of mine, this is possible with the support of KEH Camera. They've been buying, selling, and trading used photography gear for over 40 years now, so whether you need a camera body, a lens, a tripod, a camera bag, or one of those random odds and ends, or parts for some of those older cameras, there's always a good chance they have it at KEH because their inventory is massive. They also have a risk-free 21-day return policy for thousands of their items along with a 180-day warranty included. If you need to trade in or sell any of your gear, they have a quoting system on their website that's available 24-7. Or you can even schedule a video chat with one of their buyers. Be sure to use the affiliate links below anytime you're shopping with KEH to support this channel. It goes a long way at no extra cost to you. As a matter of fact, for 5% off your order, use MDSHOP-1. And if you're selling any gear, use MDSell and that'll get you an additional 5% bonus on your quote. Thank you again to my friends at KEH Camera for all of their support on this channel. That's it. We did some gear talk. Again, if you have any questions about this stuff, I'd love to answer it in the comments down below. But that's it for today. Hopefully next month I won't have COVID, my family won't have COVID, and uh, we can get out of the house and get back to making some pictures. So thank you guys for all the support sticking with me this month. I love you guys very much. I'll see you soon.